All right, taking you back to that late breaking news we first brought you at the top of our show. Right now, firefighters are still on the scene of a northwest side fire at an apartment complex. Tiffany Huerta is joining us live near Loop 410 and Bandera Road. So, Tiffany, what's the latest? We're getting more information as the investigation continues, but they do still believe that this fire could have started between the first and second floor. Now, take a look. Several families were in these apartments when the fire started. Officials say no one was injured, but San Antonio Fire Department Public Information Officer Joe Arrington says the fire started around 11 a.m. When firefighters arrived here, evacuations were already underway. Investigators are still trying to determine the cause of this fire. Uh, this building has 16 apartments. 12 of those were occupied at the time. Arrington says six units had severe fire and water damage. Residents are right now being relocated to other apartments here or other properties, and they're still trying to figure out what's next. Coming up in the 5 and 6 p.m. newscast, we're going to hear from some of those residents living in these apartments and what exactly happened when they when they found out all this fire and everything was happening around them. We're going to send it back to you, Max and Courtney. Thank you, Tiffany. All right, so despite some progress, Alzheimer's disease poses a growing concern across the United States. Today, we have a release of the 2023 Alzheimer's disease facts and figures report, and it highlights some of the top issues now and even gives us a glimpse into the future. Yeah, according to the Alzheimer's Association, the number of patients is expected to double by the year 2050, resulting in 13 million people with the affliction. We're joined now by Greg Shudo, the executive director of the Alzheimer's Association. Greg, thank you so much for joining us this noon. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, the report states that more Americans are living with the disease, which all of us can relate to this. I feel like everyone knows somebody suffering from this, and we know it's a leading cause of death. So a big question is, is the disease becoming more prevalent or are we just becoming more aware of it? So the short answer would be yes. Uh, I think we are becoming more aware of, of the disease. I think people are, are the, the concern is growing. People are paying more attention to, to their mental, uh, mental cognition. But also, people are living longer, right? And the number one risk factor for Alzheimer's and dementia is age. So I, I think as the baby boomers continue to age and the future generations continue to age and live longer, uh, it's only going to become more an issue. Now, oh, Greg, you, you saw the report. What really jumped out to you when you saw all the facts and the figures? So every year we, we see the qualitative data. This year, 6.7 million Americans are estimated to be living with Alzheimer's or dementia. The cost on the nation is expected to be $345 billion, uh, billion with a B. Uh, we, we know that one in three seniors die with Alzheimer's or related dementia. I think the thing that stuck out to me this year was there was qualitative data associated as well. So there were focus groups with People that have have not developed, developed dementia, uh, their primary care physicians talking about why they're hesitant to ask for a diagnosis. And that is more important than ever to ask for a diagnosis because we actually have FDA approved treatments that can slow the progression of the disease in some, some individuals. So getting that proper diagnosis and overcoming the stigma of a diagnosis is very, very important. And this year's report reflects that. And that's exactly what I was going to ask next. Can you talk about just some of the research and medications that the public should know about? Because we know that there are a lot out there. Sure. Yeah. So in the last two years, the FDA has approved two drugs that actually attack the underlying biology of Alzheimer's disease. These are not cures. I just want to be very clear about that. But for the first time in the 100 plus year history that we've known about Alzheimer's disease, uh, we have something that can actually attack the underlying or the hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, the research surrounding that, though, is more diverse than it's ever been. So we're not focusing on this one uh, amyloid reduction therapy as the as the magic bullet to cure Alzheimer's disease. But it is an important step in seeing if we can reduce the progression or slow the progression of the disease, give folks more time and ultimately uh, retain their memories for longer, live a better quality of life for longer. Uh, there's a ton of great research happening globally, but right here in San Antonio as well with the Biggs Institute. Uh, San Antonio is a hotbed for, for Alzheimer's disease research led by Dr. Sashadri and her team at Biggs. Uh, and we're, we're grateful to, to be able to support their work here in our community as well. 
In terms of local funding, you know, how is the association here, the local chapter, how are you guys doing in terms of fundraising and any events that you have coming up? Well, we are always looking for support. Uh, we, we can only do uh, so much in the community, but everything that we do is free of charge. So, so we're always looking for people to support us. I would, I would recommend folks visit ALZ.org uh, to see what events are happening in the area. We have community education ranging from Know the Ten Signs or Understanding the Basics of Dementia, all the way up to responding to dementia-related behaviors that happen on a regular basis. Uh, we have fundraising events, obviously, awareness events happening year-round. You can find all of that out at ALZ.org. Our walk here in San Antonio, October 21st at Fiesta, Texas. October 21st. All right, Greg Schuto from the Alzheimer's Association, thank you so much for being with us and your insightful intake. Thank you. All right, time to take a live look out at the Alamo City. 66 degrees. I'll be a little pessimistic. I don't see any blue skies there. I don't see any sunshine. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a pessimist here, Justin, but I'm just kind of getting people ready for, I guess, the incoming storms. Max, how can we make you happy, man? What do you need? <laughs> it's I impossible. Need, I need 75 and sunny. <laughs> That's what I need. We'll see. Maybe <laughs> next week. Maybe next week. Uh, we do need to look at the travel delays across the country. There are some in places like Arizona where there's heavy rain coming down. And then also down in Florida around Orlando where they've got some storms at the moment. Of course, that's a busy travel hub uh, this time of year. Let's look at the, uh, the maps here. And you can see Phoenix about a 30-minute delay. And then down in Orlando, I know it's hard to see there, but about a 30-minute delay there as well. The rest of the country, rest of the major hubs doing okay. That includes here in Texas because things are still quiet. Temperature-wise, 65 degrees at the airport, 60 Bandera, 66 Divine, 68 in Pleasanton. And we talked about earlier the fact that uh, we've got more sun as you go east of town, and then you'll find quite a bit more cloud coverage to go west, so the temperatures there are a little bit cooler. Case that 12 hour forecast, 70 and 3 o'clock. We top out at 72 today, mostly cloudy skies. We'll see more clouds than sun. Sorry, Max. And then tonight, we'll start to add in a few showers into the forecast. Light stuff, but we could see some showers even tomorrow morning for the morning commute. And then we turn our attention to tomorrow night when things become far more active. Make sure you have that KSAT weather app ready to go where we'll be sending out updates over the next couple days. But we'll talk more about that threat for storms tomorrow night, plus the arrival of that cooler weather. We'll time it out for you here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. All right, not a great day to check the 401k, that's for sure. Fall continues after the Silicon Valley bank collapse. Uh, and it's having reverberations around the world and, of course, around the country. ABC's Justin Finch reports two federal agencies now investigating what exactly happened. Silicon Valley Bank now at the center of two federal investigations. The uh, SEC and the Department of Justice both will be interested in who knew what when and who did what when. The Department of Justice and the Securities and Exchange Commission carrying out separate probes looking for answers into the collapse of what was the nation's 16th largest bank. Two people familiar with the situation tell ABC News the DOJ and SEC investigations are in their early stages and it's unclear if any wrongdoing has been committed. Sources telling ABC News the FBI's early focus is on Silicon Valley Bank's leadership and if there's any evidence of possible insider trading. According to SEC filings, two top Silicon Valley executives sold shares in the company shortly before its collapse. A trust held by CEO Greg Becker sold nearly $3.6 million of SVB stock less than two weeks before the firm disclosed extensive losses that led to the bank's failure. I'm really grateful that the federal government did step in at the right time. Um, and this is, I think, about as good of an outcome as we could have hoped for. Meantime, new reports that Signature Bank shareholders are suing three former top executives at that bank, accusing them of fraudulently claiming it was financially strong just three days before the bank was taken over by regulators. The lawsuit asserting Signature misrepresented and failed to disclose adverse facts. And the Federal Reserve also conducting an internal review of its oversight of Silicon Valley Bank. But Senator Elizabeth Warren wants Fed Chairman Jerome Powell to recuse himself, saying policies he supports allow banks like SVB to profit off risky investments. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 
Well, some Medicare beneficiaries could start paying less for certain prescriptions. The Department of Health and Human Services says starting next month, the out-of-pocket cost is dropping for 27 drugs. Seniors could save between 200 and 390 bucks per average dose for these medications. This initiative is part of the Inflation Reduction Act. It requires drug companies to pay a rebate to Medicare if they raise their prices faster than inflation. All right, still coming up, the EPA says it's focusing on our drinking water, what the agency has planned in order to make it safer for everyone. Welcome back. The Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, proposing new regulations to make drinking water safer. Yeah, the EPA announced that under the proposed regulations, water systems would have to monitor for six specific forever chemicals, also known as PFAs. Those are synthetic chemicals that linger in the environment and the human body and can cause serious health problems. The water systems would also have to notify the public about the levels of PFAs in the water and work to reduce them if they go above the standard allowed. The EPA says the proposal would prevent thousands of deaths due to exposure to these chemicals, as well as tens of thousands of serious illnesses. Here's the thing, it would be one of the first new chemical standards that we've seen since the Safe Drinking Water Act in 1996. But first, there will be a period of public comment. The EPA will take those comments into consideration, then issue a final decision on the rule expected later this year. All right, well, birds live everywhere from Antarctica to the tropics, and an American conservation photographer has worked his entire career trying to protect them all. I mean, they're beautiful. I don't know, they are. So, Tim Lehman, he has actually photographed birds for more than 30 years. He's the first person to capture every known species of bird, or of the bird of paradise, on camera. So, take a look. This is. I mean, this is amazing. I take pictures, not this great. <laughs> so between 2004 and 2012, he made 18 trips to New Guinea for the project, spending a total of 544 days there, taking nearly, get this, 40,000 pictures. But it's not just exotic places. Layman also snaps shots of birds in his own backyard. He's looking to inspire, hoping people will see his photos and try to protect their own pockets of nature. Justin, do you feel inspired? I do, but you know how hard it is to take a picture of a bird? Every time I try it, it flies away. <laughs> That's what makes this so much more impressive. I I, was that a penguin? Oh, I wish that people could see these penguin shots. They're <laughs> like little tuxedos everywhere. They're very cute. It won't be that cold no. later this week. No, we're not going to be seeing penguins <laughs> around here. Uh, 65 so far today. 55 was the low this morning. The averages are 74 and 52. The records are 91 and 31. So we do still have extremes this time of year. The good news is we're not going to be below freezing in the extended forecast, but it is going to be chilly. Another look at it coming up. Well, welcome back. So far, so many people in and around our community, they've been spoiled on the spring break. Yeah, they really have. But I mean, we know things are changing. I, a main question, especially for our visitors, has to do with the pollen. So, um, mm -hmm. Justin, when this front comes in, yep. usually the wind really messes with the pollen, but we're expecting yeah. some rain, too. So is that good news? Hopefully. The rain can help to wash the pollen out of the air, but I'll tell you, oak season's in full swing right now, so it may not matter. It may not matter, but I would imagine rain's going to help some, and it's been so long since we've got a good soaking rain. Uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed for that. Now it is going to come along with some cool weather. We first start with a look outside. Temperatures in the mid 60s right now. 66 at Stinson, 66 Randolph, 64 at Kelly. And we've got east Julie winds for the most part, but there's enough of a southerly, southeasterly component that we are getting uh, some moisture coming back into the area. So our case at 12 hour forecast will go mostly cloudy rest of the afternoon. Your temperatures will make it up to around 70 or so by three o'clock, 71, four o'clock. We'll top out close to 72 and then falling back down into the 60s tonight. But what you'll notice overnight is the temperatures won't get all that chilly. And that's because we'll have a lot more moisture and cloud cover in place and that'll help to keep temperatures up some. It will be quite a bit more humid tomorrow. We've also added in some very small rain chances overnight, but more so as we get into tomorrow morning, you'll start to notice some showers, maybe even a little bit of drizzle here and there. So the morning commute could be a little bit damp. Here's a look at the satellite picture. We've got clouds, lots of them west of San Antonio that has kept temperatures down throughout the day. And then quite a bit of sun as you go east of town. San Antonio sits right on that dividing line. So we've seen some off and on sun today. What we're watching is what's going on out west. This is the water vapor and we can see where there are twists or swirls in the atmosphere and this lets us know there is a bit of an area of low pressure off to the west that is working in our direction and this is what is going to give us lift tomorrow so as we look at the severe weather risk tomorrow and 
Uh, this is important because there is a wide area here that is going to be under the gun for some showers and storms. Numerous uh, showers and storms uh, possible up across North Texas as this storm system comes in. That's where the highest likelihood of severe weather is. But even down where we are, there is a scattered risk. On a scale of one to five, it's a two. So it's, it's low end, but it is there. We need to be prepared for it. The biggest threat is going to be gusty winds with this line of storms as it comes through, but we could also see some hail involved with some of the stronger storms. Now the Storm Prediction Center did extend this out west, this darker pink color, so places like Lakey and Uvalde now included in that scattered risk. You go west of that, it's, it's more isolated, but the entire viewing area is going to have the opportunity to see some heavier storms tomorrow night. So this is four o'clock today, mostly cloudy. As we get into tomorrow morning, then we start to see some of those showers, 30% chance of rain. Then by midday tomorrow, this doesn't show much, but I still think we've got a few showers out there and then skies try to clear a little bit tomorrow afternoon. If we do see some sun, and I think we will, it'll boost temperatures up to around 80 or so. So it's warm and humid. That's the fuel needed to really get the storms going once our front comes in. And this is after dark. So 10 p.m. Thursday, we start to see some storms in the hill country. And then by midnight, 1 a.m., the storms are starting to become a little more robust along the front. This is when we could see some of that severe weather. And then those push through to 3 a.m. Still some lingering storms behind the front, though. And this model even shows some rain lingering into Friday morning with some heavier downpours, maybe even for the morning commute, but then quickly moving out during the day on Friday. Then we have to concern ourselves with the wind. This shows wind gusts maybe up to 35 miles per hour or so. I think we could see some gusts close to 40. It'll take until uh, Friday. This is Friday, by the way. It will take until Friday afternoon for the winds to calm some. But with those gusty winds, this is what the wind chill is going to look like Friday morning. This is Friday morning, 8 a.m. So when you wake up Friday morning, the rain's beginning to clear out, but it'll feel like it's in the 30s. It'll feel like it's 32 in Bernie, 34 Canyon Lake, and 37 here in town. So what a change. Then beyond that, it stays chilly, and we have more chances for rain. 20% chance of rain on Saturday with highs only near the 50-degree mark, and then 47 on Sunday with a 40% chance of showers. And then even on Monday, more showers. As we head back to work and school, it's going to be a chilly, damp day with rain. A good bet. It's not until Tuesday that we start to warm up. So let me show it to you in the seven-day forecast. 80 tomorrow, then that big fall off in temperatures. 52 Friday after a 60% chance of storms. 50 Saturday, 47 Sunday and Monday. There'll be chilly days, cloudy with chances of rain. And then Tuesday, we finally warm up. Notice, though, all temperatures above freezing there. You don't have to worry about your plants or anything like that. Just have the jackets and umbrellas ready. We'll be right back. Time to go over to a couple of my favorite people. All right, so we've actually been texting Mike throughout the show. <laughs> yes. Mike, what's going on over there? Lots we have food. got, we can see what's going on over here. This <laughs> yes. is amazing. First of all, think of your favorite food. Oh my goodness. Now put it in a sausage. And oh that's my what gosh. this gentleman does. <laughs> yes. Adam from Doghouse. Okay, what is in these sausages? Well, these sausages right here, yeah. these are corned beef and cabbage, pepperoni pizza. We'll put anything in a sausage that you could think of. Literally any dish, and it can possibly be in a sausage. All right. We will tell you all about that. Also, if spring is in the air, well, not for long, but a lot of people want to spruce up the yard. That's right. Jen. Yes, our, it doesn't quite feel like spring, right, Mike? But we are channeling those spring vibes here at Rainbow Gardens. I have Robin joining me. Now, look at all this color. So beautiful, but she said there's two colors that can help if you add them to your planter to offset all the colors. Tell me what those are. Yes, it is white and yellow. So as you can see, it really brings out that color and you can see it right from the street. Yes, from okay. far away. So good to know, add either white or yellow to your planters. Don't forget that. We've got more tips coming up. All right, and of course, spring break is happening. A lot of fun spring break spring break camps, and Gina Marie from Gina Marie Art Studio is here. And these are not cascaronis, are they? No, they're not. We filled them with paint. Okay. Okay, and this is just one of the classes right. that kids can take. Right. So go. Jackson Paul. Me, me first. Okay. Go. <laughs> fun already. We're going to tell you about some of these art camps for kids and a lot of other great things. 
<laughs> Speaking of, all right, South by Southwest Festival is going on. They had a red carpet up there, and we got to chat with some of the, you like that, didn't you? Some of the celebrities. And what are the shows and movies are they looking forward to? Yes, and, that, and so that's what we want to know, too. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.